Hello students, Professor Benavides here. Let's go over chapter two. Chapter two, one of the most important chapters, provides a solid foundation, many, many, many different topics. It's called variables, uh, but it throws in, like I say, a lot of other things. It covers variables not only in Alice, but in, in Java as well. And we also talk about data types and precedence rules and concatenation and shorthand assignment operators and casting. So it's a big topic, big chapter. So Java variables. Um, first thing is we introduced to the idea that data can be categorized as either constant or variable. So we're gonna learn about variables in this chapter. Strangely enough, you're not shown how to create a constant. And it has the same format as a variable. You just use the, add the keyword final. Constants are used for when you don't want to change something during the, the life of the program. Like maybe you're giving everybody a 5% raise. You don't want to change that. But let's zero in on what a variable is. A variable has a type, a name, and a value. Okay. And by type, we mean data type. A name is, you know, like age. And a value would be like 35. Okay. So naming variables, these naming con conventions and rules, there's two different kinds of things and they're kind of mixed in here. Rules or syntax rules are things that you can't violate. I mean, you can't start a variable with a number. You can't have a space. Okay. So um, even though you can use numbers, they just can't be the first digit in the, uh, variable name okay so variables are case sensitive so name lowercase means some is different than name with uh, a capital N you wouldn't want to do that anyway <laughs> as a matter of a convention so a convention is agreed upon way of doing things whereas a syntax rule is a you know you must do it it's a it's you know otherwise you know you're going to get uh, an error message right so one of the things that you can't do, since we're talking about can'ts, is you can't create variable names that are important words for Java, keywords. All of these keywords you cannot use to create your variable names, such as if, final, okay? Those have specific meaning to Java, and you can't use them in a variable name. Here's some example variable names. And uh, some of them are valid and invalid. Let's take a quick look at some of them. Uh, notice how the valid ones start with lowercase. But if you have two words on the variable name, you will, um, you will go ahead and, and capitalize uh, the first character of the second word. Uh, even though some are valid, like the underscore, it's not part of our convention. You know, we don't typically uh, write in that style as a Java programmer. All right. So that brings us to the primitive data types. And there's quite a few of them. It's byte short, int long, float, double, char, boolean. But really in this class, we're, if it's a whole number, it's gonna be an int. If it's gonna uh, have a decimal point, it's gonna go ahead and be a double, right? And that's pretty much all of the ones we'll use out of here. And if it's gonna be text, it's gonna be a string. We'll talk about strings in just a while. But how do you declare the uh, data types? This is the, the syntax. It's the name of the data type followed by the name of the variable. Like this one, int number, semicolon. Remember, all statements in Java terminate in a semicolon. Once you create a variable, you could go ahead and assign a value to it. Of course, you can do both of them at the same time. You can, you can go ahead and declare a variable and assign a value to it. That's the Java way of doing things. And it's kind of like whatever's on the right gets assigned to what's on the left. You can also go ahead and, and, and uh, initialize or create multiple variables, such as int x comma y comma z, and then you can populate them later with values. So here we see that you can do something like this if they're the same data type. So int age gets 30, hours gets 45, and some gets zero if they're the same data type, right? Now, some people uh, say that, well, I'm not say that these two styles are the equivalent going left to right on here but it's much easier for beginners to use this style in other words 
every variable on a separate line. Okay. That way, if you need to, you can go ahead and put some comments. But if you good, if you use good variable names, you won't, may not need to be doing a whole lot of commenting. Okay. So uh, here we see an example of the numeric variables. We have 12 being assigned to X, which is an int, and 14.5 being assigned to Z, which is a double, a floating point. And look at here, this is a really important point here. You can't assign a double to an int, and we're gonna be explaining why for a long time in this chapter. So it has to do with the idea that you can go up the ladder, but not down the ladder. In other words, you have, implicit automatic conversion going up the data types but not down and it has to do with size and lots of other things as well All right so the idea is this is that every data type has a range let's go back to that listing here see how there's a range on each data type so if i were to try to put an int see how the range is much bigger if i were to try to put an int in a byte it's not going to work even if it is just 127 okay you know, so uh, the reason why you can't you can't go up is because of limitations on range and other matters, but you could certainly go down. You know, uh, I mean, a byte can I mean a byte can always become an int. That's really what I want to say, right? You can always go. You have implicit automatic conversion going up, but if you want to go down the ladder, right down this this uh, list you're gonna to have to explicitly convert, okay? So, variable names, variable assignments, you know, that brings us to the idea that we can't put something um, that's bigger in a smaller bucket. Think of these data types as buckets and think of the double this is a, 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 a literal, right? A numeric literal, it's a, it's a, it's a double, 18.5, and you're trying to put it in, a, in, a, in an int, and it's not gonna let you, you're gonna have an error message, okay? Now, some of the things you can, uh, 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 things you have to understand is that whenever you have a number that is a floating point, guess what? It's a double by, by default, yeah. But so if you wanted to assign 100.98 to a float, it's not going to work out. The only way to do that is to go ahead and use this uh, procedure here where we have a, uh, a little letter F or a big letter F that converts this double to a float so that it can be assigned to a float. Okay, so then that brings us to the other variables. Uh, we have uh, Boolean and char. They're not going to be used a whole lot of this class, but the advanced programmers just love Boolean. And they just love chars, right? Like repeat, uh, you know, if you want to repeat inner y or end, repeat or boolean, you know, the boolean, uh, a boolean variable. So by the way, this is boolean variable. When you're using it in text, that should be with a capital B. However, the 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 data type is lowercase b. Okay, a char variable holds one character, and it's uh, the format for that would use single quotes rather than double quotes. We'll compare char with a string in just a minute. Well, I said just a minute, and really uh, just a minute, right? So we have string literals. So a string is not a primitive data type, but it's considered an object variable in Java. So in this case, I have string message, and then below that I have string message, and I assign it a string literal. So message, has inside of it go cougars. Okay. Here we have an S out exhibiting concatenation, where we have a string little literal concatenated with 25 plus 10. Now, what what's what is going to happen here? So what's going to happen here is that uh, is we need to understand the difference between the plus sign as used for addition and the plus sign as used in concaten in string concatenation. The plus operator. Okay, so what's going to happen here if you concatenate a string with a number, it's going to become a string. It's like upward promotion uh, on here because the string is the higher of, 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 of all these data types. So if you really wanted to do some math here, let's say you did want to, you wanted to add 10 to 25 before you concatenate it with the string, 
you would have to put it into a parenthesis to modify the order of operation to have that done first. Okay, here's a good example of how you do concatenation. If you've got a string and it says the total is plus total, right? And whatever's in total is 50.95. So it'll say the total is 50.95, working out really good so far. So when it comes to arithmetic, we have the same old rules of operated precedence that you learned a long time ago in algebra, right? Uh, the only, probably the only new operator is the modulus operator, and it is the remainder of the division. Okay. So the precedence rules means that multiplication, division, and modulus operator are going to happen left to right in that order. Then we have addition and subtraction, and then the equal sign, of course, the parenthesis modifies everything. Then she goes through a variety of examples here. Modulus to explain, you know, 13 of modulus uh, 4. The uh, answer is 1 because 1 is left over. And she goes through many, many different examples so that you can learn modulus. So that brings us to the shorthand abbreviated operators. Uh, and instead of writing something like tally gets tally plus 1, you can just go ahead and say tally plus plus. And um, this has a lot of historical significance. It comes to, I mean, Java was derived from C or you know, evolved, I think is a better word for it, from uh, C. And, um, you know, so C++, you know, is a little play on words, uh, not only because of the shorthand notation, but because it did include objects as well. That part was messed out in her explanation of uh, C++. So this statement right here, tally gets tally plus one, is equivalent to tally plus plus. We can also decrement as well as increment. So we have incrementers and decrementers. And the shorthand abbreviated operators uh, come in different uh, you know, formats, whether uh, we're doing addition, uh, subtraction, multiplication, division. So the casting rules go like this. You can, as I said, you can go up the data types, byte can go into a short, can go into an int, can go into a long, can go into a float, can go into a double. But you can't put a double in a float, even though they're both a uh, flowing point. You can't, you know, put a float in a long or a long in an int or an int in a short or a short in a byte. Okay. If you want to do that, you're going to have to cast. You know, you, in other words, explicit. You're going to have to specify explicitly. So we have automatic conversion going up this ladder, if you would, uh, but we'll have to explicitly uh, specify to go down. And there are good reasons why you would want to go down. I mean, sometimes you do want to separate the whole number from the decimal points. As you, We have a, an example here in the Money Changer program where it kind of like makes sense to use the modulus operator. But how do you cast different ways? You can go ahead and, and, and uh, uh, put the data type that you want to cast to to the left of, of uh, the number or the variable, and that will cast that. Here we see that a, a double is being cast to an int. Of course, needless to say, that 31 will be assigned to Z. Okay. Um, so a little walkthrough. Don't discount this section here. Every single one of these sections talks about something really important about working with, you know, uh, expressions in in Java. So I invite you to, you know, like she talks about parentheses, she talks about the order of precedence, she gives you examples of the dangers of integer division here, you know, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the problem of integer division, but basically what happens is if when you divide an int by an int, it, it drops the, the, uh, the decimal, right? Um, you know, there's a lot of other little things you got to look out for, such as division by zero, Right? You can't do that. Um, but she walks you through an equation that's meant to demonstrate this equation here. She's going to walk you through to get the answer uh, on here, step by step by step on here till you get to the very, very end uh, on here. Okay. Well, the punch the punchline here is that if the variable y has been declared as anything less than a double you know, then you would have to cast. So in other words, it works out fine. That equation will end up evaluating to 9.5 being assigned to y. But what if 
Y was an int. So you're going to have an error because you cannot assign a double to an int. The only way you could do that is by casting. And if you do cast, you have to realize that the decimal portion will be truncated. So that brings us now to the um, hands-on exercise. Remember, a lot of times these hands-on exercises, you know, they're some people think they're end of chapter optional ideas, but really uh, they're kind of like part of the chapter. They're hands-on exercises and she walks you through step by step what to do. Like on this one here, make the alien walk, uh, making an alien walk. She walks you through doing this. I'm just gonna just eyeball this a little bit and I'm gonna show you my rendition where I, you know, um, uh, made some minor modifications to it uh, on here. She shows you how to, to, uh, to uh, create some statements in Alice. And remember Alice is just being a stepping stone to Java. Here we see that we're using the move method or the alien to move, and then we're going to manipulate the uh, right hip and the right knee to simulate movement. We're going to go ahead and have a, a do together uh, on here after the movement that to simulate the move the the legs moving. She shows you how to use the control key to drag to the uh, you know um, clipboard so that you can copy lines of code uh, on here and. By the time you know it, you've written this, and the alien walks. Of course, you're you're not going to be cooking with gas till you learn later on, you know how to do loops and stuff like that. Because you're certainly not going to want to be doing repeating these lines of code, you know, uh, over and over and over again. So hopefully you'll see that there's uh, you know a lot more that we need to learn as time goes on. So how do you go ahead and bring in a variable? Because that's the nature of this chapter. You just click that tile called variable and drag it to the place where you want to uh, put it. And um, it has a very similar format. Alice has a very similar format to uh, Java. Here, uh, you'll notice here that this is a decimal number. That's the data type. The name of the variable is amount, and I'm assigning 0 0.23 you know, to a variable called amount. That's being done here by Right here on value type, you'll specify the value type and you'll specify the initialization. Now, um, as we continue uh, to go on here, um, you can go ahead and, and she shows you how you can go ahead and, and change things. And that's that's the alien, but you know, from this point on, we can change the value of a variable and it will update the value everywhere. That it's used. So in other words, she 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 distinguishes you know between um, a um, number versus a variable. In other words, instead of typing in a number right in here, that you would go ahead and use a variable. Very 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 important uh, point uh, to uh, you know to that's being made here. Okay. Let me go ahead and show you my rendition of this. Of course, I adulterated it a little bit. Remember, you're you're going to learn more if you adulterate these programs, but don't don't su submit only what you're asked for in your lab assignments. Okay, really, really, really important. Okay, so here's the alien. This was the same thing you typed in in the book, except I was playing around uh, with it a little bit. I uh, went ahead and added um, another variable called name. So which is a text string, and I signed Bob to it. And then I had the alien say hello, and then I concatenated it with Bob, and then I concatenated it with an exclamation point. And I gave it a longer duration because I have trouble, you know, th these things go past the screen way too fast for me. So I put a duration of two on there. And then I have the alien turn to the camera. And then I have the alien say, take me to your leader. Kind of cute, right? Kind of cute. So let's go ahead and run and see what it says. See how it goes on here. So the alien walks. He says, hello, Bob. Walks a little bit more. Turns. And take me to your leader. Of course, what else would you expect the alien, you know, to say? All right. So that's my little rendition of um, 
you know, and, and I think I added some really simple code on here, you know, uh, I wasn't manipulating a whole lot of body parts and it just had him turn to face us, made it a very personal statement uh, on here. And I showed how variables can be used to, to hold a string value, not just a number. The, 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 the variable that she introduced here was amount. And the, uh, by the way, I do want to show you the, um, the view that we have here that, uh, is Alice view. Sometimes uh, in the book, you, she's going to tell you to, the author is going to have you view your code in uh, a Java view. Uh, so it depends on what the nature of the, the, the program is. So what you're going to do here is you're going to go ahead and go to window, go to preferences, and then look at programming language. You see how there's a little check mark on Alice? That's how you know when you're matching up with your book. Now, if you left it on Java, it's going to look very different. So you may get the, you know, if you did that before, maybe somebody else was using your version of Alice and you're typing in, you're, 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 you're working on it and you say, well, this doesn't look like the book at all. Go ahead and go to window preferences and make sure you're matching up with what she wants you to match up with. So the Alice view is a little more simplistic view than the, um, the, 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 the Java view, but to get, just to go and, 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 um, reiterate a few things on here. If you want to comment, just drag the comment on here and drop it wherever you want to drop it, right? And then you could say, you know, um, you know, whatever you want to put. If you want to put in a variable, then later on you'll learn about assignments. But for a variable, you know, you can go ahead and put in a variable up here. And this is the window that comes open. And you can go ahead and, and um, specify what kind of variable type is it? Right now it's set to onset. So you'll, uh, um, you know, um, can specify decimal, whole number, Boolean, or text. Okay, let's say I want to do another text. And then I'm going to go ahead and call it, well, let's say I'm going to call it last name. Right? And then I'm going to initialize it with, uh, you know, I can go ahead and, um, I can just leave it like that, right? Or customize it to, um, you know, um, something that's going to be filled in later. Let's say that I want to have the alien ask me, what's your last name? You know, rather than initializing it to, I could put my last name in there right away. You know, I could initialize it to la uh, my last name. Let's go ahead and do that. You know, because we haven't covered prompting yet. Right? So, uh, you know, so right now I have a variable called last name and it's got Benavides in it. So you can see here the alien says, hello, Bob. Um, uh, you know, he, he, we could go ahead and have another say statement. You know, say he wants, you want to have the alien spook you out, you know, because they all have superpowers, right? So you'll uh, 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 drop this one in here and you can go ahead and put in a, uh, you know, a custom, make a, a, a custom string on here. You can go ahead and say something, you know, like hello. Your last name is space, and then when that when that comes in here, you'll click on a little down arrow, and then what you want to do is you want to do like a little concatenation on here, and see how it's got the question marks on here, and you got the that's, that's the same little old plus sign that we saw there in in in, in Java. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here and click on last name, All right? So now it's going to, and I, I'm not going to put the period on there. That's kind of like a, well, I guess, I, uh, you know, you just add another concatenation on there, okay? So we'll run it. Hello, Bob. Hello, your last name. Oh, that's how that went by really fast. It's a little bit too fast for me, you know? So um, we're going to have to come over here and add details. We'll do a duration of, um, of two, right? And then you can run it again. So... Well, there you go. There's my adulteration of her program. Sorry to bring. Uh, so that's that's all I got for you right now. Well, you know, not really. Let's keep on going. Um, I want to finish off the chapter uh, on here. In that, remember these exercises. They're almost. They should be considered part 
of the chapter. So here she shows you a Java example where she converts Fahrenheit to Celsius. If you walk through this, even though you, you may not be assigned one of these things, you really, you're not going to get the full understanding of the chapter unless you actually do the hands-on exercises. Okay, so she, you, you know, she starts off, you put the general comments at the top, you put in your variables, do your math, and show the output. Pretty uh, simple, uh, you know, uh, program. We've got variables, they have assignments, we've got a formula, and then we have output, okay? Uh, she, she introduces the problem of energy division right here, you know, uh, you know, um, or does she? Uh, see, or does this program work the Celsius temperature should be? It didn't. And then she says, oh, right. And the first, so she goes on and talk about here, the problem, oh, oh she's gonna hit you with this problem, energy division problem. Uh, many times until you figure it out. Okay, so she walks you uh, through this until hopefully you get it right. Then she talks about the little, um, the witch. And um, in the witch's brew, you just put in, when I did mine, um, it's, I had to modify them a little bit to put them in there exactly like, she just says, um, add the witch and add the calderon. Well, when I put them on there, they, they weren't exactly just right there. So I had to make the Calderon just a little bit bigger and move the witch just a little. She does say move the witch away from the Calderon, you know, but my Calderon, I don't know why, my Calderon was a little bit bigger than that. So I had to adjust a little bit. So you put in your general comments, you do your, your statements. If you walk through this, you'll get it. And basically what's happening in this one is that you're going to be good. You're going to be um, um, transferring a um, Alice program to a NetBeans program. So it's the first thing she has you do is she, you build this program up. And once you build it, right here on this one, she says, okay, you're finished, save it. And then open up, save it and close Alice, open up NetBeans and create your, your uh, project inside of NetBeans. You're gonna select Java project from existing Alice project. And uh, you're gonna go ahead and, and select the file. And and then she shows you what the um, the folder structure looks like, pretty much like we drilled down on the Java application. This folder structure is slightly different, and you know advanced users really need to know this. But you need to know that everything in here needs to be in there. You can't be like dragging things out, like just sending somebody just a scene file or something like that. That's why. Even though she talks about the structure of these NetBean projects, uh, it's in a way it's almost for advanced users because you can't go in there and modify things unless you really know what you're doing, right? And if you don't, you end up breaking something and then your project will not work right. So she ends up having you add more code in your NetBeans project. Uh, basically what's happened is the problem is that the witch goes past the uh, Calderon so she comes up with a little equation here that allows you to mathematically determine how far to go. And that's being done with the get distance to the personal space uh, variable so that, so that the witch goes directly up to the Calderon, but not in it or not beyond it. So it's a pretty good little exercise. Let's see if I have it here. I don't know if I um, have it here. Let's see alien. On here, let me go ahead and uh, I guess I'll save that dude. Um, let me go ahead and um, open up Alice and see if I have that program. I don't remember if I did it or not. So we're going to go ahead and go to file system and go to browse. And on the desktop, I saved my stuff in here. In learning Alice, learning Java, exercises chapter two, witch brew. Okay, I'm not going to go through all of this, but I want to walk you through the steps to convert this Alice project into a NetBeans project. Okay, so we're going to click on this uh, uh, OK button. So yeah, here it is. I just wanted to verify uh, that it was here. Okay, so yeah, when you click on Run. She goes into, uh, and what we want to do is stop that problem, right? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. 
And I'm going to go ahead and start NetBeans up. In fact, I believe I have it up already. And I'm going to go File, New Project, and see how I've got the. You know, you installed the 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 Alice plugin correctly if you see this uh, Java project from existing Alice project icon on here. We'll click on Next, and we, what we got to do is we got to browse to where that file is. And she says, remember, it should be in the Chapter 2 folder. So we're going to go ahead and click on Browse, go to the desktop, uh, Learning Java is what I called mine, Exercises, Chapter 2, and get, bring in the witch. <laughs> yeah, right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to look at this very carefully because look, where am I going to save my NetBeans project? By default, we know that it's going to be in the NetBeans project folder. She wants you to save everything in these little folders. So I'm going to do this for a couple more chapters, and I'm going to start saving in other places. But I wanted to go ahead and show you that you know how to do this so that I could go along with the book for as long as I possibly can. So we're going to open up here, go to exercises. Go to the chapter two, and I'm going to drop my project in here so they can be together. Because she wants you to be organized, and that way you'll know where all your work is. And you're going to, the only way to get through this class successfully is to type in more than what you're asked to do. Okay? That's the only way to be, you know. So right now, basically, I'm bringing in the Alice file, and I'm creating a project, a NetBeans project, and it's going to be saved in chapter two. Clicking finish. And you just go ahead and say yes. All right, so let me go ahead and and um, uh, move this around a little bit. She's going to be asking you to type in some code, and um, it's really important that you realize where you're going to be typing this in. So what I, I want to do is I want to give myself more uh, viewing area here. I'm modifying my windows. And we're looking for a method called my first method. See how it brought in my comments and it brought in my code and it's bring, it, the code is written in a slightly different way. In fact, if you were to go ahead and run this, it would run the project the way it was inside of Alice. Now you can't go and modify the graphics here by drag and drop, you would have to actually create classes and objects manually with code, which we're not gonna do. But for right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add more code to this. Now I'm gonna drop you off right here, uh, but I do wanna show you how to navigate the projects window. If you'll notice here, I've got two projects open. We've got these expand and collapse buttons on here. And if you wanted to see the, the contents of the witch brew, which is she talked about in the chapter, you've got to click on the little plus sign and then click on the little plus sign next to uh, source uh, packages, and then click on the plus sign next to default. So you see that we've got an entire file for witch because it is a class, right? And we have, if you wanted to look at it, you can look at it, you can see, that which extends biped. In other words, there's inheritance going on here. We probably don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this because I don't want to mix you up. So the, the file that you really need to be familiar with is the scene file, scene.java. This is where your my, my first method resides, and this is where you're going to add your code. So I'm going to, you know, you're going to come to the end of this line and you're going to follow the instructions and continue going from here on to go ahead and finish. This little project out okay so that's about all i want to say about the witch um thing then she talks about the money changer the money changer is a really good example of how and why you would want to use the uh, modulus operator somebody wondering why in the world would i want to have just the uh the leftover from a division uh so this is an excellent example uh you know of that and then I'll, that's pretty much it i'm going to let you uh deal with that the other thing that you probably want to do here is is realize that, you know, uh, you know she she you're gonna you're gonna probably need to ver when she talks about verify. I, I don't think you should trust your programs until you actually verify that they're working out right. So there's nothing wrong with getting a calculator and verifying things out. Okay. Then she goes on to the summary. So as you can see, the hands-on exercises are before the summary, and you know why? It's kind of like bringing that point in again. 
the um, exercises are kind of like the chapter uh, as well, part of the chapter. They're not like end of chapter things to choose to do or not do. So in the summary, she talks about keywords and variables, and the summaries are a great way to bring everything together. She talked about, uh, you know, concatenation, you know, and, um, you know, she talked about the problem of energy division, and she talked about casting. All right, so that brings us to the review questions, and the remember, whenever you see the Boolean variable, that should be with the capital B. And uh, I highly recommend that you go through the, uh, the uh, end of chapter questions. And then lastly, that brings us, you know, to uh, the, uh, you know, uh, assignments, which are a little bit more open-ended. And she hits you again with the division, uh, integer division, you know, problem uh, on here. Uh, before I go, I, want, I do want to go ahead and show you some, a little code that I prepared to end my discussion with Java. And I'm going to go to a little project that I created, Java Variables. And I'm going to go ahead and show you a few things that I wanted to prove to you. So the first thing I did is uh, I created a few variables. Now, first of all, I declared a, a byte. And I do want to tell you that it's rare that we use bytes. Um, you know, uh, they have a range of, if I remember correctly, a negative well, 128 to positive 127. I'm assigning 10 to it. Then I declare um, an int, a string, and a double. I do some assignments, 65 to age. Fred goes into name. 100,000 goes into salary. And I don't want to show you here. This is commented out because if I uncomment it, I'm going to get an error message. And let's look at what's going to happen here. Why? Why did this happen? I'm trying to put in 55.55. .55 into age. What is age? Age is an int. 55.55 is a double. I can't do that. You can't go down the ladder. You have to explicitly designate. So I'm going to comment this out again. To, just wanted to prove that to you. And this other little example here, um, I assign 127 to number of dependents, which is a byte. Remember, that's a byte. And here I want to show you what happens if I try to go just one more beyond the range. What will happen? 128 doesn't fit, fit in, a, in, that, in the byte. So the concept of buckets as they're related to data types is a really good analogy. This bucket can only handle negative 128 to positive 127. So if you try to put in something more, it's, it's going to choke. And it really doesn't have to be the actual number. It could be like, for example, let's say, you're, let's say you're trying to assign an int age and it's only 10. Well, guess what? That 10 is going to make it choke too because it's an integer. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and comment this um, out again. So you'll notice here now I'm showing you how to cast. Cast is when you put the, the name of the data type you want to convert to in parentheses to the left of the variable or the numeric literal. So in this particular case, I have 55.55, uh, .55, which is a double uh, by, and uh, by default, right? It's not a float, it's a double. And I'm going to convert it to an int. That way I can go ahead and assign it to an int. But what happens there? What happens now is that age is 55. It's not 55.55 anymore. Notice how I had previously assigned 65 to it, so I've updated it. I've mutated the value of age. Then I go ahead and exhibit some concatenation, which is variables mixed with uh, string literals. One of the things that a lot of students forget is the space. Like when you're making a sentence, can you envision this? You know, if I put in what, what, Fred, Fred is in name. So it's going to say Fred is. If I forget the space right here, before and after is, Fred and is are going to be stuck together. So it's going to say Fred is what 55 years old and makes hundred thousand dollars a year. Now we're not we have we're going to learn how to format money in the next chapter. Right now we're just going to go ahead and accept that the way it is. And the so we created a, a string variable, which is an object called output. And then I pass output to system.out.println. 
Then I go ahead and show you the short uh, uh, part of the shorthand uh, abbreviated op uh, operators, you know, the incrementers and the decrementers. So you can go ahead and say age gets age plus one, or you can simply say age plus plus. Same thing for decrementing. I can say age gets age minus one, or I can say age minus minus. They're equivalent. So what I do is we know that age is, is set to 55, and I just simply say, you know, um, you know, guess what? Next year, Fred will be, what, 56, right? And the year after that, it will be 57. Now, I did have to reset age to 55 because if I would be decrementing, if, you know, in my mind, I want to decrement from the baseline of 55. So then I would then go to, to uh, 54 and, and, and 53, right? Now, if you want to learn more about the problem of energy division, if you just hold down the control key and point to this link right here and click on it, you'll get a little YouTube video that'll show you about the problem of integer division. But what happens here is that, look at this, and I'm shift, shifting topics from variables to the problem of integer division, even though they are kind of related. So what's happening here is I'm dividing 10 you know, by 30, and I'm putting that in x, which is an int. And then I'm dividing 10 by 30 and putting it into y, which is a double. We're going to look at what, what that is in just a minute, and then I'm going to print them out. And, and um, some of you might be surprised by what you find on here. So then what happens over here is I show you how you can deal with the problem of energy division. You can deal with it by either doing promotion or casting. So if we cast, then um, the, 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 one of these numbers, then the end result will always be the highest of the two data types. Like, say, for example, if I multiply an int times a double, well, guess what the result's going to be? It's going to be a double. If I multiply an int times a, um, uh, if I multiply a byte times an int, the end result is going to be an int. So let me go ahead and run this, and we'll just go back and look at it if, if we need to um, on here. Did I click run? <laughs> Okay, so uh, probably need to in, uh, increase the size of this window. Yeah, so uh, let's come up to the top. So at the very top on here, uh, you'll notice that I've got, it says Fred is 55, he makes 100,000. Next year he's 56, the year after that 57. Then I reset it to 55, remember? So when we decrement, we, we'll, it says 54, 53. So that's working out just fine. Why am I getting a zero and a 0, .0? Okay, I'm getting a zero and a 0.0, .0 on here is because when, when, when you divide, um, you know, 10 by 30, and I say get a calculator on here, um, you get 0 0.3336 kind of stuff, right? But remember, we said that when you do energy division, you get rid of, rid of the decimal place. So when I get rid of the decimal place in this situation, this is the extreme problem. Here uh, is in this particular case, I end up with zero. And it doesn't matter whether I assign that energy division result to a double or not. You can see the example below, I do my energy division, it gets rid of the decimal place, and I assign it to a double, and it comes it prints out as 0.0 because .0, it's already been lost. Right? So then I go ahead and show you uh, how to fix this by either doing promotion or casting. Remember, casting is when you put the data type in parentheses to the left of either the variable or the uh, numeric literal, and that will then allow us to engage in um, you know, promotion. So when the 10 is divided by uh, you know, 30, it will be a double and we get 0 0.33, et cetera, okay? Well, I think that's the end of this chapter, my friends. Um, I want to thank you very much for, uh, you know, being with me and, and going through this stuff, you know. Uh, and that is chapter two. Thank you very much.